Welcome to episode 26 of Vampire Survivors like game in Unity. New type of enemy. Today we want to introduce a new enemy type into our game. I have downloaded three character sprites from Open Game Art. The link to this asset is in description. After importing the asset, let's set it up. Sprite mode multiple, 32 pixels per unit and turn off filtering to remove smearing of the sprite. I have explained those settings before in previous episodes. Ok, now let's apply the pumpkin man sprite. Good. Let's clean some of the unnecessary sprites, only keeping the actual animation, by selecting the sprite and pressing delete. And let's rename the sprites so it will be easier to find them. Apply changes. Good. Now let's pull our enemy part on the scene. And let's discuss a flow in our design. You see entire enemy is just one object and our sprite and animation is coupled with enemy script, rigid body, collider and every other component. This is actually a problem. Replacing the animated sprite will be harder than it should be. You have to use an animation override, and it will limit what you can do with your animation, significantly in the long run. So what we want to do is to decouple the animated sprite from the object with enemy data. We want to separate the animated sprite from the enemy object. Unpack prefab. Rename the object into enemy. Then create an image object parented to the enemy. Add the animator to the image and reference uh, bot animator controller. Rename the animator controller instance and delete unused one. Remove animator and the sprite from the enemy object. Good. Now we have our animated sprite, separated from object, which carries the data about enemy. Similar how our character works. The animated sprite exists independent of the data carrying object, it just parented to it. Now we want to prefab the bot sprite. Then delete the sprite from the enemy. And then prefab an enemy object.
If we start the game right now, our enemy will be spawning, but they will be not animated and invisible. Let's animate it by introducing field for the animated object. Reference it in the editor. When you spawn enemy, you need to spawn his animated sprite besides his main object. Let's separate them more clearly. To avoid confusion, let's add comments. Then spawn the enemy animated sprite. Parent it to our new enemy and reset its position. Let's test this. Everything should work as before. Good. This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon and members on YouTube. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description and join button available right now on YouTube. If you join at $10 or more, you will get access to project files on Patreon. Good, now let's introduce a new enemy into the game, Pumpkinhead. First, let's animate the pumpkin head. Let's take the one with pitchfork walking down. Good. Prefab newly animated enemy. Good. Right now the type of spawned enemy is defined by referenced animation object in the enemies manager. Instead we want to introduce an enemy defined data container, which will have fields to define the enemies in your game. Create a new scriptable object called enemy data. Add create asset menu attribute so we can make instance of the scriptable object. Good. Now inside define two public fields, string name and reference to animated game object of the enemy. Create 
create two instances of the data container, one for bud and one for pumpkin head. Reference their animated object prefabs. Now in our level event list, we want to reference what enemy will be spawned. So change type from just an enemy to enemy data. In the stage event manager we want to pass the enemy which we want to spawn as a parameter. So add the enemy data as parameter. Now instead of using locally referenced animated object, we will pull the object from the enemy data. In the editor, in our stage data, reference enemies you want to spawn. Right now it will be bat first wave, then pumpkin head, and then again bat. Let's test this. Good, now we are being chased by pumpkin heads on the second wave. They for now share the same stats with bats which we will change in the next episode. This is it for this episode. Special thank you to H. May. With best regards, see you in the next episode.